Dr. Guerrero, you are now recognized for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman. <clears throat> My name is Dr. Roy Guerrero. I'm a board certified pediatrician and was president at Uvalde Memorial Hospital the day of the massacre on May 24th, 2022 at Robb Elementary School. I was called here today as a witness, but I showed up because I am a doctor. Because how many years ago I swore an oath, an oath to do no harm. After witnessing firsthand the carnage in my hometown of Uvalde, to stay silent would have betrayed that oath. Inaction is harm. Passivity is harm. Delay is harm. So here I am, not to plead, not to beg or convince you of anything, but to do my job and hope that by doing so, it inspires the members of this house to do theirs. I've lived in Uvalde my whole life. In fact, I attended Robb Elementary School myself as a kid. As often is the case with us grown-ups, we remember a lot of the good and not so much of the bad. So I don't recall homework or detention. I remember how much I loved going to school, what a joyful time it was. Back then, we were able to run between classrooms with ease to visit our friends. And I remember the way the cafeteria smelled at lunchtime on hamburger Thursdays. It was right around lunchtime on a Tuesday that the gunman entered the school through a main door without restriction, massacred 19 students and two teachers, and changed the way that every student at Rob and their families will remember that school forever. I doubt they'll remember the smell of the cafeteria or the laughter ringing in the hallways. Instead, they'll be haunted by the memory of screams and bloodshed panic and chaos, police shouting, parents wailing. I know I will never forget what I saw that day. For me, that day started like any typical Tuesday in our pediatric clinic. Moms calling for coughs, boogers, sports physicals, right before the summer rush. School was out in two days, then summer camps would guarantee some grazes and ankle sprains, injuries that could be patched up and, and fixed with a Mickey Mouse sticker as a reward. Then at 12.30, business as usual stopped, and with it, my heart. A colleague from the San Antonio Trauma Center texted me and said, why are pediatric surgeons and anesthesiologists on call for a mass shooting in Uvalde? I raced to the hospital to find parents outside yelling children's names in desperation and sobbing as they begged for any news related to their child. Those mother's cries I will never get out of my head. As I entered the chaos of the ER, I, the first casualty I came across was Mia Cerrillo. She was sitting in the hallway, her face was still still clearly in shock, but her whole body was shaking from the adrenaline coursing through it. The white Lilo and Stitch shirt that she wore was covered in blood, and her shoulder was bleeding from a shrapnel injury. Sweet Mia, I've known her my whole life. As a baby, she survived major liver surgeries against all odds, and once again, she's here as a survivor, inspiring us with her, with her story today and her bravery. When I saw Mia sitting there, I remembered having seen her parents outside. So after quickly examining two other patients of mine in the hallway with minor injuries, I raced outside to let them know that Mia was alive. I wasn't ready for their next urgent and desperate question. Where's Elena? Elena is Mia's eight-year-old sister who was also at Rob at the time of the shooting. I had heard from some of the nurses that there were two dead children who had been moved to the surgical area of the hospital. As I made my way there, I prayed that I wouldn't find her. I didn't find Elena. But what I did find was something no prayer will ever relieve. Two children whose bodies had been pulverized by bullets fired at them, decapitated, whose flesh had been ripped apart, that the only clue as their identities was a blood splattered cartoon clothes still clinging to them, clinging for life and finding none. I could only hope these two bodies were a tragic exception to the list of survivors. But as I waited there with my fellow Uvalde doctors, nurses, first responders, and hospital staff for other casualties we hoped to save, they never arrived. All that remained was the bodies of 17 more children and the two teachers who cared for them, who dedicated their careers to nurturing and respecting the awesome potential of every single one, just as we doctors do. I'll tell you why I became a pediatrician, because I knew that children were the best patients. They accept the situation as it's explained to them. You don't have to coax them into changing their lifestyles in order to get better or plead them to modify their behavior as you do with adults. No matter how hard you try to help an adult, their path to healing is always determined by how willing they are to take action. Adults are stubborn. We're resistant to change even when the change will make things better for ourselves. 
but especially when we think we're immune to the fallout. Why else would have been such little progress made in Congress to stop gun violence? Innocent children all over the country today are dead because laws and policy allows people to buy weapons before they're legally old enough to even buy a pack of beer. They're dead because restrictions have been allowed to lapse. They're dead because there are no rules about where guns are kept because no one is paying attention to who is buying them. The thing I can't figure out is whether our politicians are failing us out of stubbornness, passivity, or both. I said before that as grown-ups, we have a convenient habit of remembering the good and forgetting the bad. Never more so than when it comes to our guns. Once the blood is rinsed away from the bodies of our loved ones, and scrubbed off the floors of the schools and supermarkets and churches, the carnage from each scene is erased from our collective conscience, and we return again to nostalgia, to the rose-tinted view of our Second Amendment as a perfect instrument of American life, no matter how many lives are lost. I chose to be a pediatrician. I chose to take care of children. Keeping them safe from preventable diseases, I can do. Keeping them safe from bacteria and brittle bones, I can do. But making sure our children are safe from guns, that's the job of our politicians and leaders. In this case, you are the doctors, and our country is the patient. We are lying on the operating table, riddled with bullets like the children of Robb Elementary and so many other schools. We are bleeding out, and you are not there. My oath as a doctor means that I signed up to save lives. I do my job, and I guess it turns out that I am here to plead to beg, to please, please do yours.